So I know it's been a while since I made a proper video. I've had a very busy summer with a lot of out outdoor activities, which explains my awesome tan. Um, so I just wanted to maybe give you uh, an update of what I've been up to and then just show you something that I've been, been holding out on you. I've been working on this one thing for quite a while and I just wanted to make sure I was clear on what it meant before I before I presented it. And this has to do with the um, relationship between a Fourier transform and something in the geometry of something uh, um, that's called the torus knot, which I've been uh, working with lately. So before you watch this video, you might want to um, watch this video, uh, which is called, But What is the Fourier Transform? A Visual Introduction. Okay, so uh, I work in the, the field of medical imaging, and in MRI physics, the Fourier transform is a, a very important tool that they use um, to generate MRI images. And so, you know, I'm not saying I'm, a, I'm an expert in this, but I'm very familiar with uh, this technology. And um, so, and I discovered that the torus knot has a lot of features that uh, the Fourier transform has. So if you watch this video, and, and I'll make sure that I put all the links to everything I say, uh, talk about today, into my description. So before you watch the rest of this video, um, you might want to go and watch this video on the Fourier transforms, because the software that I wrote that generates the torus knot has a lot of similarities. So um, here is the program I wrote. Um, basically what this does is it generates a torus knot geometry and the torus knot geometry is very much like the, uh, let's see if I have this here, it's very much like the Rodin coil. Okay, somebody was asking me earlier today about the Rodin, Rodin coil and so the Rodin, Rodin coil uh, appears to have the geometry of the torus knot. And so I'm just going to quickly show you the torus knot with my software. Um, let's just choose some parameters that look a lot like a torus knot. So there we go. Okay, so this looks a lot like the torus knot. It also looks a lot like the ferrocell, like the hypertrochoid pattern um, underneath the ferrocell. If I choose less lines of on the torus knot, then you get this kind of pattern, which we is very familiar to anyone that has seen the ferrocell, uh, which is a device for looking at magnetic fields. If you put a magnet, a north pole or a south pole under um, a ferrocell, you will get this hypertrochoid pattern which you also see in the torus knot. Now the thing that makes the torus knot different from a normal torus is that it's got two parameters. One parameter is for the number of turns that the, let's say we're wiring, um, we're wiring up a rodent quill. Then the torus knot is the number of turns around the torus, so the number of turns around the circle, um, and the number of turns through. These are the two parameters that I'm inputting into my torus knot software. And we can look at it from the side here. Okay, this would be, if this was a magnetic field, this would be the dielectric inertial plane on the plane here. And this would be the magnetic field, which would be um, in the form of a torus knot. The torus knot seems to match nicely with what we're seeing under the ferrocell, at least from this direction. Okay, so let's turn them back down to zero. If you watch the video on the Fourier transform, you will, um, you will see some similarities to what I'm going to do here. So let's say I have zero turns through, but one turn around. Then what you're going to see is just a circle. 
So one turn around and no turns through is going to give you a circle. And then two turns around and three turns around and four turns around as I'm changing the parameters here. It doesn't change anything here other than the fact that the number of times that it's going around the circle is right now it's set to four. So let's go back to zero. So I'm going to go one turn around and then I'm going to go one turn through. Now this is interesting. If you go one turn around and one turn through, then you get um, a, a sort of a polarized shape where you have half of the circle is over here and half of the circle is not over here. Okay, that's kind of a pun, that's a torus knot, and there's nothing over here. Now if I go two turns around, sorry, one turn around and two turns through, then you get this kind of a shape. Okay. And so on. So if you go two turns around and two turns through, you get this polarized shape or you get this offset. This circle here is analogous to the center of gravity that you saw in the Fourier transform video. So when you have two turns around and two turns through, you have um, uh, the center of gravity which is shifted from the normal center of gravity which is usually around around the center of the object. So if we get let's say we have 39 turns around that's going to going around the circle 39 times and 39 turns through that would be 39 of these lines going around the circle. Then you get this pattern. But if you have 39 turns around and 39 turns through, you get this pattern again. And so in the Fourier transform, this is basically a three-dimensional Fourier transform. We're now dealing with three-dimensional space instead of the two-dimensional sine waves um, complex sine waves that you're seeing in that video. Okay, and uh, you know there's some you can get some pretty neat shapes when you do this. Let's try to find one that's really cool. There's, uh, let's see. So this is 85 turns around and 34 turns through and you get this kind of a pattern. And of course, the more turns around and the more turns through you get, the more complex the pattern becomes or can become. Now here is 182 turns around and 26 turns through. And you, see, you can see this very simple form um, because it is at a resonant frequency, the turns around are or the turns through, or as a resonant frequency, as the turns around. And so it creates a fairly simple shape. But if I go off by just one, then you get the torus shape. You get this torus shape. Now I have one more parameter that I want to show you. And this parameter right now, it's set to zero, and that's sort of, that's the, the central offset. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the central offset. And I'm going to turn this down a bit so you can see what's going on. Let's go to 19 turns around and 20 turns through. Okay, so as I increase, okay, I'm increasing and decreasing, increasing an offset. There's an offset parameter in the math, and I'm increasing and decreasing that offset. And you can see sort of in between, you get, you have sort of an internal donut and an external donut. Okay, as I increase, as I decrease it, the internal donut gets bigger. And as I increase it, the internal donut gets smaller. The internal one gets smaller, the outer one gets bigger. And if the internal one gets bigger, the outer one gets smaller. And this is very similar to what we see in the magnetic field, where... When the, the dielectric component gets bigger, the magnetic component gets smaller and vice versa. So this is kind of mimicking the geometry that we're seeing under the ferrocell 
where we see um, when the dielectric gets bigger, the magnetic gets smaller, and vice versa. Now under the ferrocell, what's in the middle here would just be black. Would just be black. If that's the dielectric component, if that's analogous to the di dielectric component, you wouldn't actually see. This would look black in the middle, and the magnetic would be the only thing you can see. But it, when I do the geometry, when I draw out the geometry here, you're seeing um, what I believe is analogous to the dielectric in the middle and magnetic on the outside, which is, uh, you know, this is behaving exactly as Ken showed, where he showed one video where he had two magnets and one, they were this approximately the same size, but they had different field strengths. And so the stronger magnet had a bigger dielectric component, but it had a smaller magnetic component. And the one that was weaker had a smaller dielectric component, but a bigger magnetic component. So the dielectric can overtake the magnetic. And when it does, they kind of overlap. They kind of become one thing. And that would probably be analogous to a black hole, where the magnetic, where the dielectric takes over the magnetic, then you can no longer see in the visible universe, the magnetic. So I think this is the correct geometry for what we're seeing under the ferrocell for the um, for to show the difference between the magnetic and dielectric. Now, one thing that Ken always says is this is there is only one field. There is one field. There's only one field. Only two components of the one field. And in reality, this is one one field geometry. There's only one set of equations that's generating this geometry. This is one geometry. But this geometry is showing the two components of the one and only dielectromagnetic field. There is only one field, but just the way they're interacting with each other makes it look like there's two fields. But there's really only one. There's only one line here. I'm only plotting one line here. It's just a complex line that is having this behavior. So anyways, I thought you would find this interesting. I've uh, been holding out on you. I've been wanting to make this video for a while and I haven't gotten around to it. So here it is. And uh, I hope this kind of helps you sort out some of the things that Ken says, i.e. there is one only one field and two components to the field, one dielectric, one magnetic, when the magnet, when the dielectric gets bigger, magnetic gets smaller. When the dielectric gets smaller, magnetic gets bigger. And that is, in fact, what we see under the ferrocell. So, so I hope you guys had a great summer. I sure did. I had a lot of fun with the water and the waves and the sand and the wind and the golfing and um, the sun. So, you know, that's what summer's all about. The summer's all about the sun, and it was a really great summer here. Um, fall is coming, the cold is in the air, and uh, I hope I will have more time to make videos in the future, in this uh, next coming couple of seasons. Um, soon I'm going to give you an update onto some of the other things I've been up to um, over the last couple of months. I've been doing a lot of research and you know, but I just wanted to get my feet wet and make a little video and uh, send it out to you so that you don't think that I forgot about you. I didn't forget about you. You're important to me. And uh, I hope uh, you're, you uh, are appreciating what I'm trying to do. So thank you very much. And we'll talk to you soon.